Okay, so if you've ever taken an algebra course or studied algebra, well, you should have the skills to be able to answer this question. And uh, the question is 3 times the square root of 90 plus 2 times the square root of 40. What is this equal to? And we want to do this without the aid of a calculator. So we're not trying to take the square root of 90 in our calculator, get a decimal, multiply by 3. That's not the objective. We want to simplify this square root or radical expression. I'll talk a little bit more uh, in just one second on what a radical is in mathematics. But uh, even if uh, you've never taken algebra, if you're totally lost, do not run away from this video. I will show you how easy it is to simplify an expression like this step by step in uh, one second. But uh, for those of you that can do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then I will review very thoroughly how easy it is to do a problem like this. And again, if you are taking any sort of math at the algebra level and uh, beyond, this is an absolute must know skill. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer, and all of that is equal to this 13 times the square root of 10. All right, now, if you're looking at this expression, you're like 3 times the square root of 90 plus uh, 2 um, times the square root of 40. How did you get to 13 times the square root of 10? Well, of course, I'm going to show you uh, exactly how you get there, but in algebra, you absolutely need to know how to do this. Okay, this is really, really important stuff. But uh, if you got this right, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus A 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in dealing with radicals and square roots in algebra and in mathematics. They'll be like, wow, that is so cool, so impressive. They won't really know what that means, but just tell them anyways because it just sounds so cool. Nice job. All right. so. Before we get going here, uh, let's just talk about this symbol right here. Okay, so we have this symbol, and uh, most of you would refer to this symbol as a square root, right? So if I had like a 4 underneath here, we're talking about the square root of 4, and of course that would be 2, and that would be correct. However, in mathematics, this symbol here is technically referred to as a radical. Okay, it's a radical, and there's different parts of a radical. I'm not going to get into that right now because... We can have things other than a square root, okay? We can have like the cube root of 8, and that would be equal to 2, all right? So the cube root of 8 is saying, hey, what number times itself, okay, three times uh, gets us back to 8, and of course that's 2. So if we're talking about the square root of a number, okay, like 4, we're asking what number times itself, just two times, gets us back to 4. There's really a little invisible 2 there. We don't write it. But anyways, this uh, symbol uh, in uh, mathematics is referred to as a radical. So when you study algebra, uh, you study radical expressions, radical uh, equations. It's really, really important that you know how to work with this. And what we're going to be doing here is taking radicals like the square root of 40, for example, and we can write the square root of 40 in a simpler way, okay? It's very much like writing a fraction. If I have the fraction 100 over 200, would I leave my answer this way? Well, you could do that, okay? But your teacher would be very upset, and then they would take your A+, plus, even if you have the right answer, and it might take a few points off and give you an A-, minus. okay? And you would not like that because in mathematics, it's really not like an optional thing to... Uh, write the simplest version of your answer. So here, obviously, we can cross-cancel these zeros, and uh, 100 over 200, its simplest form is 1 half, okay? Well, we can kind of do the same thing with these radicals as well, and that's what we need to do in order to do this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. And again, even if you've never learned this before, uh, I think this will be easy enough for you to uh, follow. All right, so 3 times the square root of 90 plus the square root of 40. Before we do anything, we need to look at these uh, radicals, these square roots, 
and we want to ask the question, can we simplify these square uh, square roots, okay? So it's very much like if we have a fraction, let's say 736 over, oh, I don't know, 929, okay? Now, this is, you know, a fraction. The question is, can I reduce this fraction? Well, we're going to have to put some effort into it to see if we can do this or not, simplify it. Same thing here, okay? So we're looking at these square roots, and what needs to come to mind is like, all right, I got some square roots here. Can I simplify them? Well, let's try to simplify them, okay? So that's what you want to do. And what is it required to simplify square roots or radicals? Well, let's go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so again, when you see a square root, okay, a radical, and we're going to just, I'll, I'll use for the purposes of uh, the rest of this video, I'll just be talking about square roots. So when you see a square root, you want to be talking, or your brain wants to kind of think, okay, I want to try to simplify this if possible. Okay, so there's two things you need to know in order to simplify a square root of a number. All right, so let's take a look at this example, the square root of 20. All right, so what you can do uh, with square roots and radicals, okay, this is such a cool property, is we can think of factors of the number that's underneath the square root or a radical, okay? So for 20, we can think of any two numbers, two or more numbers actually, that such that you multiply them, you get back to 20. So you'll say, all right, well, 20, 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10. Uh, also, 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5, right? So these are factors of 20, right, 4 and 5. So what we can do is rewrite the problem, like the square root of 20, in terms of its factor. So the, uh, the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 5. Okay, now notice I have one big square root over the 4 and 5. Now this is the cool part of this property. So what you can do is break up this big square root into two small square roots. So the square uh, the square root of four times five we can write as this we can write as the square root of four times the square root of five. So there is a property or law, if you will, of square roots or radicals that we can do this. We can take the, uh, the square root of the factors and write them as their own individual square roots. The factors as their own individual square roots. So, you know. If this was a more formal uh, lesson, of course, this is what I do in my courses. You can find links to all of this. Matter of fact, if you want more help in this, check out like my algebra courses. You know, I uh, thoroughly, you know, instruct on this. But here we can kind of just see the pattern, right? So the square root of four times five is equal to the square root of four times the square root of five. Now, why is this advantageous? Okay. Well, you notice here the square root of four. I can rewrite that as two. Okay. So I could take the square root of four. So this is two, all right? The square root of four is two times the square root of five. So two times the square root of five is the answer. Okay, so if I told you to simplify the square root of 20, the correct answer would be two times the square root of five. Okay, so this is really the kind of the main um, property that you need to understand in order to do this problem. Well, well, that's one of the properties, okay? There's a few other things that I'll cover, but let's kind of highlight this next thing. And uh, this is called perfect squared factors. Okay, I have it abbreviated here, a perfect square factor. So perfect square factors are numbers like this, 4, 9, 16, 25. Now, why are these perfect squares? Because when I take the square root of these lovely numbers, I get these nice, uh, perfect, uh, you know, uh, whole numbers, right? The square root of 4 is 2, and uh, square root of 9 is 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay, so what we want to do is be on the lookout for these type of numbers, okay? 4, 9, 16, 25, perfect squares as factors. So here, when I was trying to simplify the square root of 20, I thought to myself, well, you know what? Uh, let me kind of erase this here for a second so we can clearly see this. I'm saying to myself, all right, square root of 20, uh, I could think of that as 2 times 10, right? Because 2 and 10 are factors of 20. No problem, okay? But here's the deal. At 2 and 10, is that on my perfect square factor list? Nope, 2 is not a perfect square because the square root of 2 is a, is a decimal. The square root of 10 is a decimal, so, so that's not good. But if I if I kind of like not think of tw a square root of 20 or 20's factors as 2 and 10, I can think to myself, are there other factors of 20? Oh, yeah, how about 4 times 5? Well, this is what I want to use because 4 is a perfect square. Okay, it's a perfect square factor. So you want to think about writing numbers in terms of a perfect square factor if possible, 
okay? So if it is possible, then we can simplify as I just showed you, okay? So perfect square factors uh, and this property right here. So we're getting uh, one step closer to figuring out how to do this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So here is the square root of 90 and here's the square root of 40. So hopefully you can kind of see right off the bat that I made this problem kind of easy for you. Uh, it's kind of a basic introductory level problem. But the square root of 90, I can think of uh, 90 as 9 times 10, right? Because 9 is obvious perfect square and 4 times 10 is 40. 4 is a perfect square, right? So 45 times 2, that's not going to help us here. Um, and 8 times 5, 8 times 5 is not going to help us here either, right? We want to be on the uh, lookout for perfect square factors. Okay, so uh, here is the way to kind of kick off this problem. And now we're going to uh, apply uh, this property to take the next step. And you'll see here in just a second how easy it is to do this problem. But uh, before we look at that next step, I'd like you to take the next step of smashing that subscribe button, hitting that notification bell. Uh, you just have no idea of the positive impact this small, tiny little action has on my YouTube channel. Okay, I've been on YouTube for years and years and years, have thousands and thousands and thousands of videos from, well, not, yeah, I kind of went a little crazy there, thousands of, well, I do have thousands and thousands of videos, not all of them on YouTube, but on YouTube, I believe I have over 2,000, but uh, the videos I do from basic math to advanced math by calculus, because I'm obsessed with helping people learn math. Okay, so if you like my teaching style, well, this is the fuel that keeps me going and I'm pretty much posting uh, every day. So if you hit that notification bell, uh, you'll see my latest content. All right, back to the problem. All right, so as we talked about, uh, we're thinking about 90 and 40 in terms of its factors and we wanna use perfect square factors. So uh, this problem, we have nine and four. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna make the big leap from going to going from one big square root to uh, uh, small individual square roots, all right? This is a property or formal property of square roots and radicals. So the square root of nine times 10 is equal to uh, the square root of nine times the square root of 10, okay? And the square root of uh, four times 10 is equal to the square root of four times the square root of 10, okay? Now this three in front of this square root is multiplication. So this is three times the square root of nine times uh, times the square root of 10. So this is all one big multiplication problem plus two times, two times the square root of four times the square root of 10, right? So all multiplication, this is addition. So we're gonna have to work on our multiplication first before we try to add this stuff together. All right, let's go ahead and take that next step now. So three times the square root of nine, the square root of nine is three. Okay, remember when you are taking a square root of number, uh, you want to uh, write the principal square root. You don't want to write the negative version of it for those of you, let me kind of erase this here real quick, because this is a very important point and I don't you know, want to have you miss it. So the square root of nine, some of you might say, isn't that positive negative three? Well, yes, you can think of that, right? Because negative three times negative three is a positive nine and then positive three times positive three is also positive nine. So why don't we write both positive and negative? That's only for when we are looking for roots and solutions of like quadratic equations and beyond, okay? So typically when you're asked to find the square root of number, you're just going to write the positive version of that, okay? That's called the principal square root. So don't confuse yourself by putting that negative sign in there. All right, so the square root of nine is a positive three. So now we have three times the square root of nine, which now we know is three, so three times three. That of course, well actually, let me go ahead and just show you the rest of this. Three times three is nine, so that would be nine times the square root of 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, handle this side. So two times the square root of four, square root of four is two. So two times two, of course, is four times the square root of 10. All right, now at this point, we are ready to um, see if we can add these uh, uh, two uh, square root expressions, and we can, okay? So this is nine uh, square roots of tens. So it's like if I had square roots of tens over here, I had 10 and another square root of 10, and I had a whole bunch of these. Matter of fact, I had nine hanging out over here, and then I had four square, square roots of tens hanging out over here. Uh, how many total square roots of tens do I have? Well, 13, right? Because it's nine and four. Nine plus four, of course, is 13 square roots of 10. So in algebra, or when you're dealing with square roots, if this part, if you have the exact same square roots here, 
you can just add the numbers in front of the square roots. This is very much like uh, coefficients in algebra. Uh, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. If I have uh, 2y plus 8y, this is 10y, okay, because these are y's. These are what we call like terms, okay? So I add the coefficients. Uh, 2 and 8 is 10. But if I had uh, 2y plus 8y squared, well, there's nothing I could do here. Okay, I can't add, add these because these are not the same. All right? And that would be the same uh, situation when it comes to radicals. If I have, uh, let's say, I had 7 square root of 10 plus 3 square root of uh, 5, well, I, I can't do anything here because these square root parts or radical parts are not the same. So this is as simple as I can, um, you know, have this expression. But if I had a square root of 10 right here, I'm like, oh, look, at these are the same. Now I can um, add the coefficients, and this would be 10 square root of 10. Okay, so hopefully I kind of gave you a nice little crash course on dealing with square roots and radicals and expressions like this. But this problem is uh, pretty easy, and there's a lot of um, other things that you definitely uh, need to know to be successful with uh, dealing with radicals and square roots. Matter of fact, this is really, really important in algebra. So if you need more help with this, again, check out like my Algebra 1 course. Uh, you'll find a link to that. If you happen to be in Algebra 2, you'll see the links uh, to my other courses in the description as well. And I also have additional videos on my YouTube channel. But here's the deal, okay? You watching me do this problem, don't be deceived by you saying, wow, that was interesting. You know, I get this. I understand. Well, I'm not saying you don't understand, okay? And that's great. I'm trying to deliver clear and understandable instruction to you. But in order for you to uh, kind of make this your own personal math skill, you must put in the work and practice, okay? That's non-negotiable, right? It's just like, you know, um, uh, learning how to be a great baseball player, right? Once you get some instruction, you know, the practice uh, is, you know, essential, critical, you know, non-negotiable. So uh, don't do a few proms, okay? Do as many as you can stand. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.